This week on the show, we have actor Jacob Buster, who stars in the highly anticipated horror series on Showcase, Let the Right One In. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding that constantly looking for validation or acceptance from others can never lead to a truly fulfilling life. The reality is, many people go through life seeking constant validation to please and to be liked by others. The problem with this is that when you are constantly looking externally for validation or for the need to be liked, you become easily swayed by the other people's opinions, drowning out your own inner voice. In turn, other people's opinions become the voice of reason that guides you, rather than your own inner voice. This leads to unhappiness and frustration long term. Successful people understand that the only person whose validation that they need to seek is from themselves. The next time you find yourself wanting to please others and seeking validation, remind yourself that all the validation that you ever need lies within your own beliefs and never from external factors. As Elizabeth Parker quotes, the only thing wrong with trying to please everyone is that there's always at least one person who will remain unhappy, you. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, then let's talk about it. Showcase's new horror series, Let the Right One In. Let's talk about your character and the series. Yeah, so Let the Right One In is pretty different from your typical vampire series. It's not really surrounding like romantic taboo love. Uh -huh. it's, it's very unconditional family love. So like a mother and a son and a father and a daughter and brother and sister. And so it treats being a vampire as if it was a disease like rabies transmitted through bite. So then it raises these interesting moral questions of like loyalty versus morality, how far you'd be willing to go to like cure or save a loved one, you know? Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have actor Jacob Buster from the highly anticipated horror series on Showtime, Let the Right One In. Jacob, thanks for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. It's good to be here. It's great to have you. I'm really excited about your new series. But before we talk about that, let's talk about your acting career. Uh, when did you start acting and why did you want to pursue it? So I, I started acting when I was seven and oh, wow. my dad, he, he always wanted to be an actor. Now he's kind of switched over to a writer director and my mom was a casting director. So my family's kind of always been in the business. Yeah. So I, I, I kind of started having a thing for it when I was a lot younger. But, um, you know, as, as time started to move forward, I really started to find this love that I had for it, kind of finding myself through characters that I was able to portray. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of characters, you've acted in quite a lot of series, uh, Colony, Suits, The Lost Boy, The Thunder Man, to name a few. What's been the highlight of your career so far and why? Ooh, I mean, <laughs> there, there's obviously highlights of being able to travel for work. Like there, there was a, a small show that I did in South Africa. That was very oh. fun to be able to travel out there. Um, and then obviously just being a series regular on a show is such a different experience because you get to go day in, day out, creating a character and working off of things that you've done previously. And it's just a really wonderful experience. And I would say that's some of my highlights is Colony and Let the Right One In. Ooh, very nice. And let's talk about it. Showcase's new horror series, Let the Right One In. Let's talk about your character and the series. Yeah, so Let the Right One In is pretty different from your typical vampire series. It's not really surrounding like romantic taboo love. Uh -huh. it's, it's very unconditional family love. So like a mother and a son and a father and a daughter and brother and sister. And so it treats being a vampire as if it was a disease like rabies transmitted through bite. So then it raises these interesting moral questions of like loyalty versus morality, how far you'd be willing to go to like cure or save a loved one, you know? 
Ooh, very nice. It looks pretty scary. I had a chance to watch the trailer. I was like, oh no. <laughs> I'm like, this this would be perfect right before Halloween, right? It's just in a few weeks. So tell us about your character specifically. Yeah, so my character, his name is Peter. He is a vampire. And, um, you know, he, once you become a vampire, I'm sure you aren't really able to focus on many other things than <laughs> a vampire. So he kind of, he's kind of been stuck in this teen space for a while because he's been focused on other things and there's there's really positives and negatives through the story that come with that where like there's positives of he's able to bring light and fun to such a dark situation having this kind of childlike mindset in a sense mm -hmm. and there's also negatives of him not really understanding quite how much the people that love him are giving up for him to be there and try and help and cure him mm -hmm. And it's a pretty small crew um, that are on the series. Uh, tell us about your experience working with them. How was it? So it, it, it was really wonderful. I mean, Let the Right One In, I, I turned 18 a month before filming. Wow. I went out to New York alone, first time being like out, out of Utah filming alone. And, and they, were, they were all just really wonderful. They, they made me feel very welcome. And obviously, I mean, working alongside Grace Gummer as my sister, I mean, just a wonderful person and actress all around. So I, I was very grateful to be able to have them to work with. And Jacob, I heard that the series was based on a novel by the Swedish author, John Ivita Linkvist. So tell us about the adaptation. Yeah, so, so the original book, play and film are all really lovely. I, I, I actually hadn't heard about them before I, I got the audition. And so I watched it all right after and and there's definitely some similarities in how eerie the story can be and the kind of idea of being a vampire as a disease that's put in place to be cured. But other than that, it really takes the story into a new direction with this kind of family love and, and it brings in this warmth and this light to the story to kind of counteract that eeriness, which I really love, that I think the story really benefits from. Mm -hmm. And for fans that haven't watched the series yet, what can they expect? Is this just for horror fans or would it be for anyone? You know, I, I think that's one of my favorite things about it is I, I've obviously being a teenager, I, I have a lot of friends that are like, hey, let's sit down and watch a horror movie. And, and it's kind of just like jump scares, people coming around corners yelling and scaring you. But, but this story, it, it's got that horror aspect, but not just to scare you. It's really to ground the story in reality and to show what it truly would be like to be a vampire. And so the, the story kind of centers around two families that move into an apartment next to each other. There's a father and a daughter. The daughter is a vampire and it's kind of his story of trying to keep her alive and keep her fed. And then right next door is a mother and a son and the mother is an NYPD homicide detective. And so it kind of gets very interesting having to keep a vampire alive and having the NYPD homicide detective right next door. Wow, very intense, very intense. I, I'm excited to watch this series. Honestly, when I watched the trailer, it's it looks scary, but it also looks thrilling. So I was mm. like, this looks like the type of show that I would like. So I'm, I'm very excited to watch it. I want to talk about some of your accolades. I know you won the best actor under 18 um, at the Utah Awards. So tell us about that experience and kind of seeing you know, all of your hard work pay off because I'm sure that was a rewarding moment. Yeah, when I when I won that award for the first time, it, it, it was kind of crazy. I was nine years old. There was like a few thousand people there. And and my parents had been like rehearsing with me in case I won, but we didn't really expect it. We were just kind of like, well, you could say this, you could talk about this, like, you know that you loved working with this person. And as soon as I won, I was so excited because of how hard I had worked on everything and to see that actually come to fruition in this kind of award. But as soon as I stood up, my stomach dropped. Nine years old, trying to walk in front of a thousand people, I was like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Walking yeah. up, trying to remember what I had been told beforehand and I was like, oh no. But as soon as I got up there, it was, it was a blur and it was wonderful. I got to talk and as soon as I came off stage, all those butterflies went away and it was it was a really lovely experience. Yeah, and at such a young age, I can tell that you've 
obviously experienced quite a lot of risk. I mean, you went to New York alone. You you now are living in Utah alone with your brother. Um, let's talk about how risk has played a role in your success. Mm. Yeah. So I guess with with risk, there's just a lot of obviously living in Utah before COVID. You really had to be in room to kind of book things. And so I, I, I took a bit of a risk kind of creating a studio in my basement, like really getting good lights, good cameras, a good background so that I would be able to kind of try and match mm -hmm. what they did in the room. Um, and, and I would say that risk has paid off pretty well now that COVID kind of happened to everybody's online. So I kind of got that head start there, which was really great for me. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, clearly it's paid off. And, you know, with any triumph comes its share of challenges. So what are some challenges that you face in the entertainment industry? It's not an easy industry to be in. There's a lot of challenges, a lot of competition. So what are some challenges that you faced and how did you get through it personally? Well, some of the challenges that I really faced was um, being, being a series regular on Colony and being younger i i was obviously a kid i i still wanted to just go around with my friends and go outside play some soccer throw around a football but um but i had to move away for like six months at a time and mm -hmm. so when i would move away like one of my closest friends moved to new york funnily enough i got to go see him while i was working on let the right one in but um yeah all my my friends had kind of moved away and done new things with their life while while i was gone and and it was it was a little difficult because I, I definitely had to deal with loneliness a lot in the industry because I also don't typically do like Disney Nickelodeon shows. And so I, I don't typically get to work with a lot of kids my age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel that it's helped you grow right as an actor as well. Sometimes the challenges in life helps you grow as a person, become better, better actor, better person. So I feel like it's, it's worked out for you. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> and what else are you currently working on right now? So right now, I, I, I did a film that's coming out pretty soon. It, I, I can't say too much about it, but it, it feels a little 80s. It's called Aliens Abducted My Parents, and now I feel kind of left out. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah it's, 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 it's a very family-friendly film. And, and it kind of centers around this idea of my character believing that his parents have been abducted and that they're coming back for him. And it's kind of this story about the girl and the guy and how they fall for each other and all, all that fun stuff. Ooh, very nice. It looks like you're going into the sci-fi horror worlds, clearly. Because <laughs> I know you played other roles in Hallmark um, in a Christmas movie. So this is, is this a different, um, kind of direction for you and which one do you prefer out of curiosity yeah i i, I think i definitely prefer drama mm. hallmark, hallmark is very fun and and i'm i'm not discounting that at all i, I love <laughs> but but there's something about working on a show like let the right one in that really like i don't know it like digs deep in me mm. to like try and create this character and like there's there's it's not really spoon fed to you which i really love there's a lot about the show that if you're not paying attention it may go over your head and you kind of just have to like really analyze it it's not escapist television it's really like a show that you would sit down and kind of analyze in a sense Mm -hmm. I like that, that, you know, it makes sense though with dramas, horrors, you really have to dig deep and, you know, find the character right within you. And I think that's actually pretty exciting. I never thought about that. <laughs> I, I like that. And, you know, for any of our viewers watching um, that are looking to you as an inspiration, you know, you're 18, you're such a young age and you're, you're doing it, you're living your dream and you're pursuing it. So. For anyone out there not seeing results in their own life, or maybe they're trying to be an actor, they're not getting those roles, what would you say to encourage and inspire them? Mm. I, I guess what I would say is 90% of the job of being an actor is the audition. Yeah. And so if, if, if you view the audition as work and like, oh, here's another audition, I have to prepare for this, I have to do this, it, it's it's most of the time not gonna go your way. Like you, you gotta view auditions as fun and a chance to create a character and be creative and just kind of play and mess around you know because mm -hmm. there, there were points in my life where i i viewed 
acting as a job and I, I, I didn't want to do auditions. I was a kid, I wanted to go play, I wanted to go do these things. And now that I've kind of transitioned into a place where I really love auditions and it's one of my favorite parts of acting, just creating characters all over the place, I, I've, I've seen very different results. Mm -hmm. I like that, that you said that you can't see auditions as work. <laughs> I'm guilty of it. When my agent sends me <laughs> five, six auditions in a week, I'm like, oh no, like I see it as work. And all of the auditions that I've really put 100% effort, I usually get them. And the ones that I'm like, oh, I'm just going to wing this, it doesn't really work. So I think that's, yeah. it's a small message, but for anyone that's going to be in the entertainment industry, um, I think that's an important one is just to, you know, Take it seriously because it, it could pay off and you can land a large role like you did. So I, I think that's uh, that's a very great advice. Jacob, thank you so much for being on the show today. Congratulations on all your success. I can see you in the next leading role in a huge movie. You definitely have the skills um, for it. So yeah, congratulations on everything. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, and come back soon. I'm definitely going to binge watch Let the Right One In tonight. Uh, <laughs> hopefully it's yeah. not too scary. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it should be good. It should be good. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook. You can fly high than the sky. Shine